read a recipe out of a week, and uh, I hope you see how it fits together with the scriptures that we have today. We've got some rain, we had some cold weather, we've got some sheep coming up. It's, it's always working good when we get a little rain. Hope some ponds filled, so it was spotty rains, but I think everybody got enough to do some good. Wore a blue tie to remind me of the beautiful rain. <laughs> Do you have any announcements? Football team. <laughs> yeah, that's a big deal. Malta. So Carol is on. And we'll give a, 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 a prayer for her when we get to the tour. And nobody will serve the next year's fire. Yes. Okay. After church, I think we'll set up tables for Harvest Festival before we leave. Harvest Fest is coming up next Saturday. So if you haven't signed up for anything, there's still a few things that we need. And there's still some things to do for Harvest Fest, yes. Also, after church, we're going to Brahms for lunch. Okay. Right after we leave here. So if you'd like to go to Brahms for lunch, there's a group going. Male and female, so. <laughs> <laughs> Are there two different Brahms, or is a male and a female? Oh, oh! <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> and whoever gets there first, if you go ahead and save some tables, it would be nice. Yeah, maybe busy with the weather heating up. Also, I uh, want to thank uh, Dale and, and Janet for what they, they're doing to keep get us ready for Harvest Fest with uh, refrigerator in order to see it, and Dale had to make some adjustments as always. It never doesn't come just ready to plug in and be able to take care of that. And then that beautiful work done on the cement step there on the landing up there. Uh, that is perfect. Uh, we really appreciate that. And uh, thank you so much, Dale, for doing that. Because that, he was out in the hot sun. I chipped about four chips off of it, but didn't do much help. But he chipped that out and uh, got it to stick, which is a big deal when you're messing with concrete. Any other announcements? How about birthdays and anniversaries? No birthdays or anniversaries? Well, let's get on with our worship then. If you will turn in your Faith and Sing book, 2271. Let's all worship. <laughs>
We have all kinds of things going on in our world. It's a busy world that we live in. And sometimes we forget to take time to worship God. I and mean, He calls us to worship each day, but this is the time we focus together. This is your the ecclesia, the church that's called together to worship and be edified by God's presence and to just enjoy the savor of being with Him. So let's lay aside those distractions, the worries, grudges, confusion about what's going on in our world. Let's just lay all that aside and focus upon God. And let Him fill us because He wants to fill us with good things. So we'll give you a moment to get your mind in that set of worship. And then I will lead us in open prayer. So let's pray. Well, God, we do worship you and praise your holy name, and we thank you that you love us so much. I pray that you would help us now to keep focused. We're so easily distracted. Help us to make this a sacred hour where we spend time with you and with each other in worship. Guide us as we read the scriptures and as we sing songs and as we speak with one another that we might always be looking to you and, and walking with you during this time. And help us to bring worship into our week and not just keep it inside this building, but let it spill over into our daily lives. Thank you for what you're going to do. Guide us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our psalm is found in 111. By the way, we got a note from Rebecca Mullis wishing us a good harvest fest, and she sent a gift towards Harvest Fest, and uh, she's from New Jersey. Our influence reaches far and wide as we have contacts. Um, so anyway, know that people are, are focused and are grateful for what we're doing here. So for that, let's praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my whole heart in the company of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord. Study by all who delight in them, full of honor and majesty in his, is his work. And his righteousness endures forever. He is gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him and is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown the, his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just, and all his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever and ever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Amen. Let's sing our next song we found in our faithful scene book. What does the Lord require of you? 2174. All right, if you'll remember, we worked on this one a couple different times. So I'm going to try to be a techie today, which doesn't come naturally. But we'll see how we do. Give us enough time to find this in the in the out there yet. Yeah. <coughs> and we're not very even on our two sides. Remember, this is a song that's got a couple different parts. So the girl won't put you over on the south side. <laughs> <laughs> She's still in. <laughs> I'm using the CD, I recorded it, but I sang along. 
for me. Uh, it's all of us anyway. So this part, this side will be the what does the Lord require of me? What does the Lord require of me? We'll sing all that together first. And then this will be the justice, kindness, walk humbly with our God. And we'll go through a couple of times singing it, and then I'll do the desk can a couple of times and watch me, and I'll cut you off at the end so hopefully everybody knows what we're doing. <laughs>
I will give you a wise and understanding <coughs> such as no one has had or ever will have. And I will also give you what you did not ask for, riches and fame. No other king in all the world will be compared to you for the rest of your life. And if you follow me and obey my decrees and my commands as your father David did, I will give you a long life. Thank you, Jenna. Wow, what, a, what an interaction with God that Solomon had. Now we're going to sing an old favorite, um, a good one, 377, it's in your handbook. It is well with my soul. All four verses. Sing all four verses. All four. <laughs>
Abigail for your beautiful music. And now we're going to hear from Ephesians about wisdom here on earth and how it plays out. Thank you, Janet. We've already had a number of requests for our joys of concern. First of all, um, this morning uh, I got a call or a text from Chris Bolte that Steve fell and he broke some ribs and had some cracked vertebrae or broken vertebrae, right? Um, anyway, I don't, I'm not exactly clear on all the injuries, but uh, he needs our prairies in Wichita now. Trying to decide options for what needs to be done. So let's pray for Steve Bolte. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let's give thanks that Carol is home and pray that she will continue to heal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our praise and prayers. Also, David Sally had a tree fall on yesterday and he was cut, so he has three broken spots in his back and a little bit of blood we can do with that and they're taking him to Wichita I think tomorrow to get all checked out and see if he needs surgery. For Dave and Sammy a tree fall and David Sam. David Sam. David Sam, my cousin. Okay. Had a tree fall and needed uh, uh, may need some surgery. Anytime a tree falls and you get a branch or two or part of it, it's not good. So let's pray for him. Let's pray for him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And then for the Willards, had a, another thing happen with the fire. Got the truck for no apparent reason, just maybe a short somewhere. Pray for them as they've had a string of really bad, difficult trials. For the Willard family, Lord in your mercy, you're our prayers. Staff as they are 
getting things straight around. I, I think most of them met had a school day this last week at least one. And so that's if you're if you've been a teacher, you know this is the time to make some adjustments and uh, catch up on some things. So for the teachers and staff, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayers. A little praise for the 30th year of Janet driving a school bus. That is a big deal. Let's, let's give praise to because uh, you know, driving safely in this day and age, even if you're driving perfectly down the road, there's people there that are doing all kinds of things coming at intersections. And so, just that she's able to do this and does an excellent job, let's give thanks for that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our praise and thanks. Well, I know we've got uh, prayers for our nation and prayers for um, the conflicts around the world. And we'll, during the pastoral prayer, you're welcome to have your own prayers. Um, I will lead us. But before that, we'll have a, a moment of song to get us in the right mind frame. And, uh, time of silent prayer, so I hope that you were talking to God and maybe needs to get straight out of the and God to take care of that too. So our first song is found in your Faith and Sing book, 2215, Cares for Us. Oh God, we do worship you and we thank you that you take care of us. Thank you that you care for us. Thank you that you take care of those who are hurt in our congregation. We pray for healing for those that are here that need your healing touch and those that are not able to come that are hurting really bad. I pray that you bring healing to them, the people that we've heard in our community that heard about that have been injured. We pray for all those, even if they don't come to church or go to church anywhere. We pray that you bring healing to them, that they would find healing with you and that you would bring healing spiritually to them as well. Thank you for those who are in leadership in our community and in our nation. We know that it's not an easy job and not many people want to, to lead and face the criticism and the tough decisions and the doubts. I pray that you bless everyone who's in leadership in our city and county and our federal government. We pray for those who are elected and those who are appointed. We ask for your guidance as we look at elections this year that we might do what is right in your eyes. And we pray that those who are elected or appointed would lead in a way that honors you and if they're uh, astray, I pray that you would bring them in, that they might lead us in a way that 
honors you and makes our nation one that glorifies your name. We thank you for our military. We thank you for our border patrol. We pray that you would bless them, bless their families, keep them safe and healthy, help them to be able to do their job and not be led astray. Pray that you would help them also to make those quick decisions that they have to make and make the right choice. Thank you for those who protect us locally, for the law enforcement, the firefighters, those that are working with EMT services, for those who work on our utilities and keep our roads passable. We pray that you bless all those who are making it so we can get the help that we need and that are protecting us. Thank you for our farmers and ranchers and the truckers who provide the transportation for marketing, for marketing our goods and for bringing us the things we need. We pray that you bless them all, keep them safe, especially as they travel on the roads, keep them healthy, and provide for their needs. And we thank you for the rains and we pray for good rains for our, our state and for our nation that we may have abundance. We pray for good prices for the farmers as some of the spring the crops planted in the spring now will be harvested soon. Thank you for our teachers and our staff that are taking care of our kids. I pray that you would help them to do the very best job and give them the strength and encouragement that they need to face the challenges that they face in this modern world. We pray for the students. We pray that they would get the very best education this year. And also that they would not just look to the books, but look to you also. That you would teach them what they need to learn about you. Thank you for our missionaries. We pray that you would bless them as they reach around the world to get to some of the farthest, deepest, unreached corners of the of this world. I pray that you give them the strength that they need and provide for their funds, keep them safe and healthy. We pray for those who are making a stand for Jesus Christ and are facing persecution. We pray that you would bless them and give them the strength that they need and give them the endurance and perseverance. And I pray that you would pour out your blessings upon them that they would know that you are with them during this difficult Thank you for those who are willing to work in hospitals and able to do a very good job. And I pray that you would bless them and help them to give the very best care for our loved ones who are in care homes and in hospitals. We pray that, that the very best care would be given to our loved ones. We pray that they would experience the comfort and healing and peace that you give, and that you would fill them with the joy of your presence even if they're facing difficult times and painful experiences. Thank you for those who are willing to work with those who are incarcerated. We thank you that you do work in our jails and prisons. I pray that you would bless those who are incarcerated and help them to be reconciled with you and their families and their communities. Now we will pray together the prayer that you taught us. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. To us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. This time we'll receive your offering. <laughs>
And really, Solomon had this opportunity. He could have whatever he wanted from God. And he chose wisdom. And God said, you know, that's a great choice because you're going to be a king. And in fact, because you're going to, you've made a good choice, I'm going to reward you with the good things in life that people want so badly. Riches and, and fame and possessions. So it shows us a lot about God's mind. First of all, what he, what he chooses for us to want are the things that are not material. Wisdom, um, and to glorify God as, as, as Solomon wanted to do at that time. And he also will reward people with good things. Now some people didn't really see a lot of good things in their life as, as, we, would, uh, as we would call good things even though they were faithful. We think of John the Baptist we heard about, where he died early and he didn't have any possessions. But in some cases, God decides to bless people with material goods. But that wisdom is so important. It helped Solomon to achieve his goals. And what is wisdom? Is it just being smart? And then we read about what Paul said in Ephesians. What did he say? Wisdom included getting along with one another and laying aside selfish desires. He put in there, don't be drunk on wine. Some people interpret that as you shouldn't drink at all. I, I don't look at it that way, but I look at it as for people who I interpret this as for people who are seeking what wine they think getting drunk with wine will give them, or high on drugs, or whatever it is that they do to seek fulfillment can be found in God. The Holy Spirit can provide for you what is in your heart, that the aches and pains that you have in your heart. Some people will drink to forget their problems. Put our faith in God as we had in our songs and as we prayed. We put our faith in God. The Holy Spirit can give us that peace that we want sometimes that people turn to the bottle or to the, to the drug to forget the problem. Maybe you need it to, to experience love, to feel love. God can provide that through the Holy Spirit. Maybe you've got financial problems, and you know that some people go after the, uh, some stimulant or something to help forget. God gives us the ability through the power of the Holy Spirit and through the work that Jesus did on the cross, that we have access to that without having to turn to some, something to get us to forget about our cares. In fact, we pray that you often, I hope you do, God help me with this. Help me if you have a care of God, help me get through this. Because what happens when, and I used to do jail ministry, and a lot of the people that are in jail have had episodes with drugs or alcohol, and they said the problem is as soon as you recover from your episode of alcohol or drug, just going crazy and going, uh, getting drunk or getting high, is that you wake up, <laughs> And you've still got your problems and you've got a headache or some other kind of ache. And it didn't solve your problems. But God wants to work with us to solve our problems. And he wants to work inside of us because that's where the root of our problems is. And he wants to feed that part of us where we want something really bad and we don't know what it is. 
You know, people who are like that, have you been like that, where you want something, but you can't quite figure out what it is? And so you strive to drive distances, maybe you spend a lot of money on something, and it still leaves a little aching in your heart. You hear about athletes that achieve the highest goals, and sometimes they can feel a little empty, even though they received and achieved everything they wanted to achieve. How about getting done with your prayer or your uh, chore list? And you guys that farmed or good mechanics, you ladies doing housework, you men doing housework, you men or women taking care of kids at school, doing schoolwork. There's always something to do. You can never get fulfillment on that to-do list unless you just cut off the line. But Solomon, as we can see through most of his life, found fulfillment in God. And that he saw that that was the true way to find fulfillment. And we may not get there all at once. It may take us a while, even if we know the truth. One of the things I'm trying to work on is standing up straight. I think my mom taught me that when I was three years old. And just now getting the message that I better listen. Because it saves a lot of back problems if you stand up straight and you also neck problems. And, but it took me a while to get the message. And sometimes for God's message to get through to us, it takes a while. Another thing is knowledge. Seeking knowledge doesn't always solve the problem. There's a difference, of course, between knowledge and wisdom. Maybe many of you have, or maybe some of you have experienced this where you meet somebody that's really really smart, but they aren't very wise in what they do. So I thought about that, and um, I thought, I've got some books that are going to solve the problems. Here's a pocket dictionary. You can know all the words in here, even though it's a small dictionary, but it's with fine print, there's a lot of words here, and still not use them wisely. How hard is it to use words wisely, and it takes wisdom, even though you may know words and have an extensive vocabulary. Now here's one for the religious students. Lexical aids for students of the New Testament Greek. Now here's, it's Greek to me, it's Greek to you too probably, but here's some handy uh, words that don't follow the rules, when you study Greek, read so many Greek, there's rules you follow. It's just like English, only a lot more complicated. But um, some things defy those rules. And this is kind of a cheat sheet. You see a word that doesn't fit, you can look at here. But I could know everything in Greek in the original language in the New Testament and still not use it right. And then I've got another one. Here's a wound care essential. I borrowed this from Neil, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I almost smashed it. If you see her, she made a brief, I almost smashed it with this. If I could read through this book, would you trust me to take care of your wound? Probably not. Because it's not just knowing the knowledge of what this book says, it's being able to do it and to practice and trial. Unfortunately, it takes trial and error. And this is one. Well, I've had this problem for 40 years. Great outdoor furniture, 2 by 4 furniture. I've always thought, I've got these old 2 by 4s and I can make some furniture out of it. How many things have I made? <laughs> and I went through this. The trouble is, when I make something that doesn't look quite as finished as this with 2 by 4s it may be functional, it may work fine, but in today's world, uh, it doesn't even look rustic. It just looks bad. <laughs> but knowing all these things and having all this knowledge does not, does not help us with wisdom. And in today's world, there's so many conflicting ideas of what is right and what is wrong. What I think is right, there's a lot of people who think are, is, is wrong. My views on the Bible, sometimes people misinterpret. What I think is misinterpret things in Scripture and, and, and they think I misinterpret. 
But that's where Jesus comes in. When he is the bread of life and we allow the Holy Spirit to work within us, gives us discernment, gives us the ability to, to sort through what we see in the, on the, on the, uh, happening in, in the world and, and we see it on the news. We know how to, how to take that knowledge and, and do something with it. But most of all, we find fulfillment for our souls, those of us who are looking for something to look for fulfillment, find it in Jesus. Now, he's, later on, he lost a lot of disciples because it sounded pretty literal, like he was being cannabis with, with his body. But that's not what he meant at all. He later explained it to his disciples that it was spiritual. But a lot of people didn't stand around and figure out what it was. They just took off and lost a lot of disciples. Reading, uh, we follow a, a series. I don't know how many of you follow this. Maybe none of you, but it's on Sling and uh, Doc Martin. Anyway, it's about a, a doctor who is very blunt, not like we are, but he's very blunt and he uh, is practicing medicine in in a little English village. And the people there are blunt and characters and crazy and do stupid things. And they make each other really mad at times. Kind of sounds like some communities around here, doesn't it? But you know, they come together, eventually they, they come together because that's all there is. There's no perfect people in this village. Everybody's got some kind of gaping fault. And yet, when they get together, they forget about those things for special events and with emergencies. They come together and they do things that need to be done, even though they sometimes can't stand each other. And our church is kind of like that in the United States. There's different groups, there's different denominations. Even in our own community, there's people who can't stand each other, who will come together for an important cause. And God understands that. that. We're different. We have different desires. We have different hopes. We have different standards. But together in Jesus, we can come together and we can worship together and we can follow Him. And we can accomplish the work of God even though none of us are perfect and all of us have people we just don't like. That's why we have to say the Lord's Prayer, forgive my sins as I forgive others. We say that all the time. And that was one of the foundational prayers. I try to remember to say that every day because sometimes we don't aware of, aren't aware of our own sins. Or we're sure aware of the other people's sins. But I think another thing that we sometimes overlook is when we're talking about our daily bread. We need our daily bread, right? We need to eat and we forget about not being, we forget to be grateful sometimes. And I try not to do that. But there's another part of that where we need the daily spiritual bread. We need to feel God's presence each day. We need to feel that nourishment down deep. And that's why Jesus used such graphic terms. Because he wanted us to be sure that we are totally consuming the spiritual food that he's giving us. Just remember to do that this week. Remember to forgive people. Remember to work together because we are, especially those of us who are believers, are the building of God, the, the temple, the true temple. This church may fall apart. Other churches in the United States may fall apart because of tornadoes and they get burned down. But the church still exists because the people our spiritual body, a spiritual building for the Holy Spirit. So let's keep the priorities correct. Let's seek wisdom. Let's not do what Solomon did. At first he starts out really good with all these wonderful ideals and then later falls away and worships other gods. Let's not be distracted by the wealth and the opportunities like Solomon was. Even though God gave him what he asked for. Wisdom. He granted him all kinds of things. It didn't do him any good in the end. At least, if he 
didn't follow through. So let's follow through to the end. Let's do what God's called us to do. Let's persevere, but let's do it God's way and feed upon the power that He gives us through the Holy Spirit and feed upon that nourishment that goes deep. And use our knowledge wisely. Allow God to use what we have up here. All of us have gifts and talents so that we can accomplish the work of God. Amen. Closing him is found in your hymn book. 389. Truly free. 